Initially, I was unsure of whether or not I would pick up items from the Lux Legacy collection from Jacqueline Cosmetics. Nothing really stood out to me other than the fact that she came out with her very first eyeshadow palette. And I did like the look of the eyeshadow palette, but it's, it's a neutral palette. I didn't need it, but you know I like neutral palettes. So I asked you guys if you wanted me to review it, and this is the most from Jacqueline Cosmetics that you guys actually said yes. A lot of you even said you normally aren't interested in the collections that she comes out with but this one was a first and I think it's because if you didn't know she collaborated with her mom for this collection and I can definitely see her mom's influence in this collection. This collection seems to be a lot more mature skin friendly. Even from the mothers of the brides that I've worked with I feel like they would really enjoy this collection. Of course a number of you said that you weren't interested in this collection which normally that's the overwhelming majority from you guys. But yeah this is a first collection that you guys were like no, I'm actually kind of curious about this collection. So I did pick this up from Ulta so I could get my points, but everything is available on the Jacqueline Cosmetics website and Ulta as well. I didn't pick up everything. Her collections tend to be quite large and it, it kind of hurts my wallet. <laughs> so I just picked up the eyeshadow palette, the eyeshadow primer, and the powder, nothing else. But I'm gonna review what I have for you today. Let's get started. I want to begin by swatching the eyeshadow palette because it's gonna take some time. It is a large palette. It is $49, which I think given Jacqueline's price point for her products, I think this is a good price point because you are getting a lot of color options here. I did get the packaging from Ulta, so I got kind of the standard packaging. There is like a special limited edition mom packaging with all different moms on there. Maybe it's because I'm not a mom, but I was like, I don't really want moms and faces of people I don't know on the packaging. I just wanted the traditional packaging so that's another reason why I went to Ulta but this is the box right here you can see this is the Lux Legacy eyeshadow palette you need to take a look at the back the ingredients are towards the bottom so just a normal cardboard box and then this is what the packaging looks like this has a 12 month shelf life and the palette is made in USA with imported and domestic parts and then we open it no mirror I wish there was a mirror for $50 for a palette but look at all of these colors I'm interested to see if this, you know, reminds me of a Morphe palette. You know, the brand is under the Morphe umbrella and Jaclyn has collaborated with multiple eyeshadow palettes with Morphe. So we'll see. The packaging, honestly, it's reminding me a little bit of Morphe because it is cardboard. There isn't even a mirror. I consider Jaclyn to be more high-end than Morphe. So we'll see. It's definitely heavier. But looking at the overall color story here, this definitely looks like mature skin friendly. There aren't too too many shimmers and the shimmers that are there aren't too metallic they aren't going to emphasize fine lines or anything on the eyes that's just something that they teach in makeup school wear whatever you want but they teach you that shimmers aren't the most flattering <laughs> yeah and it's just it's a really neutral palette you have a good mix of warm and cool toned I love that there's so many cool toned options so this is a very pretty palette I'm into it even though you know I would say it's not the most unique there still aren't many palettes out there that touch so gray. Let's just get to swatching. Excuse this finger. It's a, I don't, <laughs> it's going through something. So we're gonna do meat and potatoes, biscuit and honey right here. Oh, let me just we got a lot of colors, so we'll do Painty Butter. And if you watch her video, which I did watch, it will explain the meaning of all these colors and why they were put into this palette. Quite buttery. These two shades seem similar. They have a different undertone, according to Jacqueline, but they swatched quite close on my hand. But there's a lot of colors here, so I'm sure some might end up being a little close to each other. So now we're getting into the shimmers. These look pretty. They feel pretty, too. They feel nice and buttery. I like how they feel. And they do have a nice metallicness to them. The silver has a little bit more oomph to it than I was expecting. These look fun. They feel really nice. Mm. <laughs> Just as I was saying that. There we go, that's better. Grays are hard. 
Hmm, these really cool tone mattes aren't swatching great. I'm gonna have to see how they do on the eyes. They should do fine on the eyes, but we'll see. They don't swatch like how she swatched them. Let's get into Pudding Girl. Now we're getting into the darker colors. So I like how there's a light to dark gradient here. Ooh, nice. Sorry, I'm producing the absolute worst swatches ever for you guys. <laughs> Okay, and then we'll get into the final four shades. Here are the swatches of every shade in the palette. I'm not impressed by the swatches so far, but that's fine. That doesn't mean anything because it's how the performance is on the eyes. So I'm not that worried. I feel like even though some of the swatches were a little patchier or softer, I feel like they should be fine on the eyelid, but we'll see. But here's how it looks. I mean, it just looks like a really great neutral palette, right? Okay, let's get it on the eyes. You can see there are a lot of shades in this palette. I'm not gonna get to every single one on the eyelid. So I'm gonna play around with the ones that I I'm worried about and I want to see them in action. I'm gonna do one eye and then I will be back to do the other. Alright, so you can see this is the look that we created. I definitely played in terms of the matte colors with the cooler tones. I have some thoughts, but first before we do that, I bought the eyeshadow primer. I'm like kind of rethinking why I decided to buy it because I'm gonna be honest with you guys, longevity is not something that I struggle with with eyeshadow primers. This is supposed to be great for mature lids. I can get away with just using concealer. I don't really get creasing, but we're gonna try it anyways. This is the first base eyeshadow primer I believe this is gonna be permanent from what I can tell it doesn't say limited edition on the website It is $20 and I don't see why this would be limited edition. It's such a staple It's only a six month shelf life. It's made in Canada This is not supposed to have a pigmented base which could be a good or bad thing Personally, I like mine to cover the veins on my eyelid But sometimes when you're wearing no makeup makeup, it looks dumb when you use concealer because it's too much coverage on the eyelid so this is great like Jacqueline said for like the clean girl look because it creates a base for your eyeshadow without you having to like go with the full coverage and you can see it blends out to be pretty sheer it's not a grippy primer at all I, it honestly feels kind of hydrating on the eyelid like I said I'm not the best judge of an eyeshadow primer but I like how hydrating it feels on the eyelid it's not tacky I didn't have too much difficulty blending over top there is a very very, very minimal tack that it leaves behind once it sets in. So the colors are going to grab the slightest bit, but I think it's perfect. It doesn't disrupt any blending. It just feels really skin-like with a little extra tack. I like this. I really think I do. For me, I did put a little bit of concealer underneath my brow and right in here where the darkness is and looks good now that I've blended it out. Okay. <laughs> I think I like it, but we'll see. So the first shade, I wanted to see how different and or similar these two would be. You can kind of see the tone difference a little bit more in person. They just look the exact same on camera, I'm aware. But Jacqueline swore up and down that you need both of these. I'm gonna tell you that you don't need both of these. And this is the main point that I wanna get across here. I'm gonna start off with Biscuit really quickly using a Sonia G Worker brush, and I'm just using this to set the underbrow. If you have lighter skin, you will notice for the most part the differences in tone there's a lot of shades in here some of these only have slight differences in tones if you are medium or deeper a lot of the shades are going to be redundant on you because you're not going to notice those tone differences Jacqueline's mom is quite fair I see where she was going with the colors that she chose because I'm not saying I'm fair I do have a lighter complexion I like the subtle differences in tone but I just know if you have a medium or deep skin tone a lot of these shades are going to look similar on you, making this palette probably not as worth it. You're not going to get as much out of it. I'm going to take a little bit of honey now. It's slightly brighter, but again, if I was just a smidgen, a smidgen deeper, they would look the same. So there's a few redundant shades, I would say, in this palette. So just keep that in mind. That's kind of one of the flaws, I think. So these shades, all in this corner, I felt like swatched a little funky, so I just wanted to go straight into it. I'm going to start off with So Lucky using a MAC 
217 brush and I am going to blend this in the inner half of the crease. One thing I'm impressed by is I always have my eye primers kind of creasing already, especially if I'm using concealer. I blend it out and put powder on and it's fine, but this primer is not creasing with an onset eye. So that's a good sign. And this color I think is so pretty. It's the perfect neutral base to a cool toned look. Like it is cool toned, but you can go warm with this with other shades after, but you can also go really cool with the shade to use after. And it's softer, it looks a little deeper in the pan, I feel like, but it looks fine. <laughs> I'm not mad. Taking a Kaleidos S1. I really had to test this one because this one I think had the weirdest swatch. And this is what I mean. You can see the very subtle tone differences, but you don't need both of these shades in the palette. And they're right next to each other, so that makes it even more obvious. I was worried about the swatch. <sighs> I struggled to get a soft blend on this side as well. It's doable, but can you see? There's a little bit of patchiness going on. So the cooler tone shades are gonna need a little extra work. You can get it to be soft. I'm not saying that you can't, but just notice it's not perfect. It's not super smooth, but it's not bad. I'm not mad at it. Am I though? I look in my monitor and I'm like, that looks kind of eh. But then I look in my mirror and it doesn't look as bad. So let's just keep building and then I'll let you guys know. Cause it doesn't look that bad, I feel like. Now we're going into TC right here with the Wayne Goss 20. So this is a little deeper. It has a hint of green in here, I feel like. And I'm going to put this right here and blend it out, outer corner. Just doing a very basic, simple look today. This is blending really beautifully. I actually really like this shade. Again, this one swatched terribly, but it's working out really, really nice. I was gonna come on and talk about the positive things I had to say about this palette because I had a good experience with this eye. But I don't know what is happening right here and why it that did not happen on the other eye. I'm, I'm gonna think it's my eye? I don't know. <laughs> now I'm confused, because I liked it on the other eye. I'm gonna keep going though. We're, we're gonna go into this shade right here, Mamacita, which has a slight satin finish to it. And this one I'm gonna carry even over my lid right here. And I really like this shade. I feel like it has its place in this palette. It's certainly more gray than the other shadows. It has a little bit of blue in it, honestly. I think that shade's really pretty and you can see it just came in and held its own with the other shadows. Okay, I took a closer look in the mirror. I think it's my eyelid why this is happening because my eyelid right here is dry for some reason. So it didn't happen on this eye. This eyelid I don't think is dry. <laughs> So I think this is on me. I will continue to test this palette after today's video and I will certainly update you guys. But I, I think it's me because I did have that good experience on this eye. And then of course we had to use the black. So I'm going to use because I said so. And I'm going to put this on the outer corner. I really like this black. I think it's black enough to smoke out the eyelid. It's not too intimidating. It's working out pretty easily. Right? That's a good black. That's nice. Okay, let me blend that out. And then now we're gonna go into the shimmers. I love that Tootsie is in this palette. I can't wait to play with Moo. These two are gonna be incredible. But the shimmers by Touch are a little drier. However, I think they're really nice. They're not too shimmery. Well, at least this shade. The silver shade in here is quite metallic. But this shade I think is so pretty. It's not too metallic, but you can tell it's not a flat shade. It applies really evenly. I like this one. See, I think that's gorgeous right here. Here. With an elf brush, I'm going into apple pie. This one has a little bit more metallic to it as you can see, but it's still really pretty and is a great way to finish off the inner corner of this look. And then inner corner, I'm mixing French silk and meat and potatoes. I'm just gonna use that to highlight. I think this look is so pretty, right? Okay, I'm gonna clean up the under eye. I had pretty minimal fallout. There was a little bit of fallout, but nothing crazy considering how much blending and layering that I was doing. So not to fall out of you have a formula. I will be back to finish the lower lash line, but I wanna test the powder on camera with you guys. So I'm using the Too Faced 
Born This Way concealer. All right, let's test out this dang powder because a lot of you guys said this is probably the number one thing you were interested in because Jacqueline said pretty much like this is the product that should go viral. It's that good. So this is the Power Move Loose Face Powder. And again, this is supposed to be really great for mature skin. It's not supposed to settle into fine lines. It's supposed to be quite hydrating. It's supposed to be sheer and just set the makeup. So I got the shade Sheer Light. I think that the shade range on this looked really great. Great. There was a lot of options for deeper skin tones and considering it's a sheer product I was happy with what I saw in terms of that. Honestly, it looked like the range randomly ran quite deep. So hopefully this works Let's see. Let's get nice and close Okay, this is a good shade for me. It looked a little deep in the pan But you can see it looks nice. Ooh. There is a very subtle sheen, but it's not glittery or anything. Let me finish the rest of the face. Now, a few of Jacqueline's other powders, because I feel like she's come out with so many face powders, I haven't liked as much because I felt like they were too shimmery or they emphasized texture. I kind of like this. Like this is everything that I wanted Jacqueline's powder to be, where you can see that very, very subtle glow, right? But it's not too much. It's not glittery or anything. I don't feel it really emphasizing any texture, but I feel like it's still blurring at the same time. I mean, this is the unset side. This is the set side. I like this powder. This is definitely, at the very least, my favorite powder that Jacqueline has launched. It seems to do everything that her and her mother claimed it would do. I would love to test this on somebody with mature skin to see how it does. I'm keeping an eye out to see any reviews. Wow, I think this powder looks fantastic. I see what she meant when she said she thinks this should go viral. I will say this, I do think it made the makeup look ever so slightly, and this is because I'm looking into a magnified mirror, a little bit heavier, but I am not bothered at all because even though maybe the makeup looks a little heavier on my skin, it looks more perfected. Okay, I like this powder. <laughs> I really, really do. Let me finish the lower lash line. I'm just gonna do it real fast for you guys. We're gonna mix these two dark gray shades. It's gonna go in the outer corner like so. Actually, I just decided let's just blend it all the way in. Let's get a touch of the black, like just a touch. Didn't realize we were going so dark and smoky. I am wearing this light pink thing. And then I want to use the green in the center of the lower lash line. And then finally, apple pie right in here. Interesting. I'm gonna finish the rest of my makeup and I'll be back to give you my final thoughts. Okay, I'm excited to talk about this collection. I really enjoyed this collection. Let's start off with the eye primer here. I think this is a nice eye primer. Like I said, I'm probably not the best to judge. I don't struggle with longevity, but I feel like it was the perfect consistency for eyeshadows. You could still blend eyeshadows over top, but it also felt hydrating. So if it performs in terms of longevity, I think they achieved exactly what Jacqueline's mom said she wanted from an eye primer. So if that sounds great for I think you will enjoy this. So I'm thinking mature skin girls, you might really like this. The eyeshadow palette. So I don't think this eyeshadow palette is going to be for everybody as a neutral lover. I like this palette a lot. Now keep in mind the formula is not full of pigment. It's a very user-friendly formulation. The shades are not sheer, but they're definitely not super opaque either. So they lean a little closer to the sheer side, but I think that makes it very user-friendly. And just from working with a lot of mature clients, grandmothers, mothers of the brides. I think this palette is going to work really beautifully over mature skin. I mean, I like it. I think it's nice. Is it the most beautiful, blingy, glam palette in my collection? No, but I think it's a solid, solid neutral palette. So if you like the idea that these are a little bit more sheer, you like the colors that you see, then I think you will enjoy this. I think it's a well curated neutral palette, but if you like color and you like a lot of pigment, this won't be the palette for you. But performance wise, I think everything was great. And then probably my favorite thing from this collection is the Powder Move Loose Setting Powder. Just exactly what Jacqueline said. Again, I feel like it did everything that she said it was gonna do. I think my skin looks 
phenomenal right now. You guys saw this side by side and what this did, so I'm really into this as well. As you guys know, this was a first impressions. I'm going to continue to use these products and I will certainly be updating you in a couple of weeks. I have a date night tonight. I'm already thinking of taking my makeup off and redoing my makeup with these products again to see if anything on my thoughts changes. And if that's the case, I will let you know. Stay tuned on Instagram because I definitely want to use some of the other colors in the eyeshadow palettes and see how the powder works, the different foundation, because I have really great reliable base products on right now. So my skin was going to look good no matter what. So I'm excited to test everything out. But if you are hesitant on whether or not you want to pick this up, I think all of these items did exactly what Jacqueline and her mother set out to do. And I think they did a really great job with this collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed my review and found it helpful. Let me know your thoughts on this collection down below. I'm actually pretty excited. Excited enough to take my makeup off and do it again in a few hours using these products. Thank you guys so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.